I did interview Ray Kurzweil in 2019, and of course I read The Singularity is Near. Also, not long after it came out, I read it in 2007, but it did inspire me to be quite hopeful about the future of technological progress. And Ray Kurzweil is actually coming out with another book later this year, this summer, called The Singularity is Nearer where he actually takes stock of his previous predictions and how they have materialized, whether they have materialized. But the issue with Ray Kurzweil's predictions more generally is that they are predictions about humankind's technological capabilities, not necessarily societal adoption. And this is where I do think the sociological, cultural, political dimensions are important to consider. Because Let's say Ray Kurzweil predicted that autonomous vehicles would be available by 2009, and they were. DARPA held some competitions where autonomous vehicles at that time very competently navigated the roads of the United States and actually went from one side of the continent to the other. So that shows that, yes, the technical capability was there. But was the societal adoption there? No, obviously not, even though some entities attempted it. I remember in 2011, Google was making a push to get autonomous vehicles, essentially the capability to be licensed in particular states. Nevada was one of those states that actually implemented a regulatory framework to allow that. So even regulators were fairly accommodating. But unfortunately, there was public resistance or inertia. A lot of members of the general public were not comfortable. They were not comfortable with relinquishing control, even if it could result in essentially a 95% improvement in accident rates, because about 95% of accidents are due to human error. There were still some of these strange AI-related errors that humans would not make, and people were afraid of those kinds of outlier scenarios. So the cultural dimension is important to consider, and that's why the Transhumanist Party exists. We see that progress is not inevitable, even if technology and our technological capabilities advance. We need people behind that technology. We need people to be willing to adopt it. We need people to be willing to use it in beneficial ways, again, to improve their lives. So advocacy is important. Now, in terms of the institutions that will guide that technology. Obviously, that's important as well. And technology can be a double-edged sword. Every technology has risks, potential downsides. The automobile, for instance, manually driven automobiles kill about 40,000 people per year. And I don't think anybody is going to say as a result of this, let's ban automobiles. Let's return to the horse and buggy days. Because the horse and buggy days were not free of accidents, and they were characterized by quite a bit of manure in cities. Yeah, which CO2, goes, yeah, gas. Exactly, exactly. So technology on net tends to solve more problems than it creates. But of course, we have to look at each individual technology and consider whether that's the case. I would say that's the case for a majority of technologies, but there are some technologies that are detrimental on net, like I think nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, biological weapons, certain surveillance systems are detrimental on net and they shouldn't be explored. We shouldn't be synthetically engineering viruses either. And I think it's important to consider this from a philosophical standpoint.